All right. So now we're talking with Kelly Aiden, who publishes under the name K. Aiden. Her latest book is Paradise Lost and Found, which is her 16th. Thank you so much for joining us, Kelly. Oh, thank thank you. you for inviting me and having. Yes. Cheers. Social cheers. cheers friends, let's do another cheers. <laughs> okay. Can you. Sound bite. <laughs> right? Um, That's good. Thank you. Can you tell people what Paradise Lost and Found is all about? Paradise Lost and Found is written in a shared world with my two contemporary romance books, my my cry book, Burn It Down, and my rom-com, Rules of the Road. But it is a paranormal book, so it is what my beta reader said was my first ice queen. Um, I don't, I'm like, I don't like ice queens. I only write what I like. And they're like, no, babe, this is an ice queen. I was like, okay. So I think pretty much any bitter middle-aged woman could be considered an ice queen, and that's what she is. She is a bitter divorcee uh, mm-hmm. who was done dirty by her ex. And for five years, she's just wallowed and put on weight and given up on everything that she loved to do for yeah. various reasons. And so she wins a self-help vacation. Mm-hmm. And, and and it's very clear from the beginning that she's kind of a, a bitch. Yeah. Right. But she wins a self-help vacation. And for whatever reason, whether it's like her excuse to like kind of get off her butt and like take care of herself. So she goes on this self-help vacation. And of course... She meets this, uh, the resort manager, Lucia Cruz, who loves to annoy her, but she's also flirting. And she's like, there's no way she's flirting with this overweight middle aged woman. And, but she clearly is. Um, and she also, I think, enjoys like annoying her. It's told all from, it's not, it's third person, but it's told all from Jess Parker's point of view. So, but essentially her and Lucia get together, but like it's a, she extended her vacation to four weeks because she never takes time off work and they're like, please go. <laughs> please go and, and get, get nicer out, yeah, right. and become nicer right <laughs> and so she extended her vacation to four weeks but essentially it's like what happened when the time is up because like lucia's father mm. owns a resort she mm. cannot leave she's like i'm here and mm. you know so like what's going to happen after that and mm. that is all i can say because right. it's paranormal yeah. um <laughs> and so uh i can't i can't give away any more okay. anybody that knows my writing knows that sometimes i throw some shit in mm. um and you'll just have to find out when you find out well, that sounds pretty exciting. Right. So for people that haven't read your other books, is this a good place to jump in? I mean, it's not a bad place to jump in. I think it's a good crossover book for people that mm-hmm. like contemporary romance and people that like speculative fiction. Nice. Because it's very much going to read mostly like all like contemporary romance when you mm-hmm. start. Um, and I've given it away to say that it is paranormal, mm-hmm. but you're you're going to discover more things like later. So and. Yeah, you could start there. Yeah. Oh, very cool. So GCLS, you come every year, right? Every year that it's been in person since the 2018 Vegas GCLS when I discovered it. Very exciting. So what do you love about GCLS? What do you love about being here? Any kind of convention is about people that love what that convention's about. Mm-hmm. If you go to a Comic-Con, mm-hmm. right? It's about people who love the things that you do, who are big nerds, who love you know, comic books who love, you know, movie characters. And I think that GCLS for me is that fan nerd for people that love to write books and read books, write fan fiction, read fan fiction, pretty much any sapphic writing and reading is GCLS. Mm -hmm. And the bonus is uh, I met a bunch of new people just today. Like Mm -hmm. every year I meet new people. I find Mm -hmm. people that are just kind of standing off like "Mm," they don't know anybody. It's their first con. I met a, a, a very tall, lanky young woman named Maya, and she is a trans woman, but it's her first con, and she's a huge sapphic fiction reader. Mm-hmm. And I was like, come with my friend. She's like, can I just come? And I'm like, yeah, invite yourself. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go eat lunch yeah. right now. And like we had a, just a big eclectic group mm-hmm. eating lunch together, just randomly. Yeah. So, and I, I think that that is, it's about making connections too. Mm-hmm. It's about meeting new friends, and it's about seeing those other friends that you, like, right. you know. Chris here that you only see like once a year. So yeah. it's just a really great place to touch base and to catch up and learn new things, participate in panels and laugh and just enjoy like life a little bit away from your regular day to day. Yeah. What would you say to readers who don't come because they think it really is just for authors? It is definitely readers because you want to know what every author I've ever met is a reader. Mm-hmm. And it's, you see authors, almost a ton of, there's a ton of authors, but there's also a ton of just readers. They're like, yeah. no, I'm not an author. So we have readers that are just on panels. 
there's always like, there's a reader perspective on a lot of panels because we need that perspective as authors. But all of us as authors are also readers. So yes. we're going around. We're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to fangirl on Chris for a second. Chris, can you sign your book? Like, ah. <laughs> and so you, you totally get you. The authors yeah. are also fangirls, oh, yes. right? Or fanboys. Like we are fans. And so come, because if you're yeah. a fan of sapphic fiction, if you want to meet your favorite author in person, if they're attending, if you want to get their signature, mm -hmm. right? All of these things can happen. And it's just really cool. That's a great experience. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is my uh, first year and it was pretty awkward at first, especially before Chris showed up. But I would just like stick my hand out and say, hi, I'm Tara Scott. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. And everybody has been so kind. Yeah. Like, it's just yeah. such a welcoming place. So definitely like really hope to see more. And like I think it's getting better too. Yeah. Like every year, I, I, you know... Sometimes there's controversy with changes that are made in organizations, right. mm -hmm. but I think this organization, me personally, I think this organization is really going in a good direction to be more diverse, more inclusive, and yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. yes. I love the inclusivity, um, and I mm -hmm. encourage everybody, if you want to come, come, because I really feel like it's getting even more inclusive than it yeah. was before. Yeah, I agree. So uh, you're getting younger, you're getting more diverse, mm -hmm. and you just you run the gamut, yeah. everybody. Yeah. It's amazing. So come and also buy Kelly's latest book. And if you haven't, buy all of her other books while you're at it. Buy, buy whatever book fits your mood. I write a lot of stuff. Where can we buy your books? Mm. Uh, my publisher, if you want ebook, that's flashpointpublications.com. Uh, all my books are on amazon.com. Uh, you can usually find Am uh, the Amazon links on my website, which is uh, katonauthor.com. Katon Author. Um, it's also on Bella. If you want to buy from Bella, Bella is a great distributor. Honestly, mm -hmm. as an author, Bella gives us the best, uh, the best sales, mm -hmm. um, as far as percentage, because everybody else lops stuff off the top other than right. the publisher's website. Yeah. Bella is actually the best one. I know for me, we get Whoa. the best, best deal and they do, they do the paperbacks and the hardcovers and the ebooks. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. That's amazing. Yeah. And so, like you said, you write in a lot of different genres. What do you think are some of the best kind of ways in, depending on what people like? I do love science fiction and fantasy. That's my jam. Um, so I write a lot of science fiction and fantasy. I have standalones. I have uh, everything but the kitchen sink. My my uh, Mystery of the Maker series, if you like, a divine mystery and steampunk and royal romance and mythical beasts and mental powers. <laughs> and yeah, that's all, all. <laughs> that's all the Mystery of the Makers uh, yeah. series, starting with the Sovereign of Sire. Yeah. But I also have um, my Isaac Asimov nod, which is Remember Me, Synthetica. <laughs> it's my, it, that was my nod to like, uh, you know, if you like uh, positronic brains and all that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just, and that one was a good crossover too. I've been told it's, I love this because it's hard science fiction. And then the next review said, I love this because it's not hard science fiction. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it's a, it's a now, yeah. it's a now. It reads very much like contemporary romance, but it's got mm -hmm. science in there. Yeah. So I don't, just, just yeah, get online, just read the back covers. Honestly, that's the best thing you do. That's what I do. Do the read inside. Yeah. Everybody that is a reader, I highly recommend doing the read inside on everybody's books. Yeah. You get like a full first chapter. Right. Yeah. You can see if the writing style jibes with you. Yeah. You can see if like just their, their language or the story yes. itself, how it's written. Do read inside. Yeah. As a reader, that is my, my, uh, yeah, I like to do that. Honest too. advice. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.